I got to play the Indigo Disc DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet early for 60 minutes. And that's all thanks to Nintendo for inviting me to this preview event. Now let me walk you through everything in detail I was able to see and experience besides what Nintendo said I'm not allowed to say. The preview event was broken up into two parts. Part one was choosing a biome and part two was an Elite Four trial and battle. So it all started off at the entrance of the Terrarium, which is pretty much the lower part and not the upper part that you see of the Academy in the trailers. And right at the entrance before walking in, I met Serrano, who was director and the founder of the Blueberry Academy. Lacey was also with him and is a second year student and also part of the Elite Four and is the one responsible for showing us around when we first arrive at the Academy. After all the dialogue, she updated the Blueberry Pokedex, which by the way, I'm not allowed to say how many Pokemon are in the decks exactly, so look forward to that when you play the game. She then presented me with a class related mission to attend in one of the biomes, which I had a choice for surprisingly. I could choose between the Canyon biome, the Polar biome, the beautiful Coastal biome, or the Savannah biome. I of course decided to choose the Coastal biome, and as soon as I did, a quest marker showed up on the map in the Coastal biome. Now I was already in the Savannah biome, since the entrance to the Terrarium was right there. So let me answer the question of what it was like and what Pokemon I saw over there. I came across Pokemon that actually made sense to be in the Savannah biome, like Giraffering, Barigaraf, like giraffes, Cantonian Tauros, Litleo, Pyroars, Bravery, Scythers, and even Wild Scissor was there. Was not expecting that, but that was really cool. You also had Relor, and that makes sense because poop bugs roll across the Savannah, and returning Pokemon like Trapinch, Dotrio, the Rhyhorn Evolution line, Blitzel, and Zebra Strike. Surprisingly, I saw Executes there in the Savannah, but they weren't accompanied with Alolan Executors. Now, of course, there were more Pokemon in the area, like this footage shows with Smeargle, and it really didn't feel like it was a small amount or a lot of repeating, but it felt very diverse as I kept going across the Savannah. Now, a big question that a lot of people have is if I may have come across any of these starter Pokemon. I was really excited to explore the Savannah specifically and find Totodile because it was actually shown in the trailer, but the Nintendo rep told us before we started that we most likely wouldn't be able to find any starters and we'd have to figure out how to get them to start showing up. So we'll be able to probably figure that out on day one when this DLC releases. So from the mission, I finished exploring up the Savannah and I made my way over to the coastal biome. It's literally just hopping over a border to get there. And I was really excited about this specific biome because it reminded me of the good old days in Gen 6 Alola, where I actually started my YouTube channel. Once I got here, I immediately made my way over to the specific spot where Lacey was waiting for me. I then talked to a teacher who literally told me, Alola, and you won't believe what the assignment was. It was to catch an Alolan form Pokemon. This was pretty simple because from the trailers, I knew I'd find Alolan executors there. But to my surprise, it wasn't the only Alolan Pokemon here. I actually bumped into an Alolan Grimer. There were also a lot more other Pokemon Pokemon, like the Oddish Evolution line, we had some Pikapex, which will evolve into two cannon, the Oricorio Psychic form, we had Pokemon there that I saw like Esper, Meowstic, Cottony, Wimscott, and when I went into the water, I even saw Inkay and Malamar. Now, after I finished exploring, I caught my Alolan Executor and brought it back and showed the teacher, and the assignment was done. All the other noobs who didn't catch it had to do it for homework. After that, the next mission popped up and it was to meet up with Carmine in the center of the Terrarium, which is right here on this map. Now at this point, I looked over to the Nintendo rep that was with me and said, I'm gonna take a long exploration shortcut to go to Carmine. I still had two biomes I needed to check out and I used my time very wisely to get this information for all of you watching, which is why you should probably subscribe. So right from the coastal biome, I made my way into the the polar biome and it's exactly like that it's polar it's cold there's ice everywhere snow the water looks freezing in the water areas you would see pokemon like seal dugong and lapras on the ice areas i spotted alolan pokemon like sandshrew i also saw snover abomina snow there were cub chews bear tricks and steel pokemon like duraldon but i didn't see its evolution roaming around anywhere and also i did not figure out how to evolve it during this preview i also saw other pokemon like beldum which will evolve into a lot of people's favorite Pokemon, 
Metagross. Now, from the polar biome, I made my way over to the canyon biome, which was very interesting. I saw Pokemon like Skarmory, the Magnemite family, Alolan Geodudes, and Gravelers were there. You had regular Sinistee, and then even returning fossil Pokemon like Cranidos and Shieldon. And you had also had Golurk and the Tyrogue family, which evolves into Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, and Hitmontop. I also found Solosis evolution line there. So the mountain was pretty stacked and had a lot of different Pokemon, and you'll find out about all the other ones while you're there. After this, I made my way to Carmine at the center of the map at the central plaza where I did battle with her. Now, I'm not going to mention what was on her team as that's a surprise for you. But what I will do now is answer a couple of questions about everything I experienced in the first part of the preview. So the first question is, what version of the game was I playing? I was playing Pokemon Scarlet. What level were the Pokemon you encountered in the biome? I encountered level 65 plus Pokemon. Pretty much just like Kitakami if you completed every everything in the base game. Another big question was how was the map size? The map felt pretty decent in terms of how big it was. It felt more alive than Kitakami for sure, and I think there's quite a lot to explore beyond what was just shown. Almost everywhere you walk, Pokemon are spawning. There are also spots where you can go that don't have any spawns, but little stations where NPCs are just hanging out. It's just nice NPC spots. You'll find also vending machines in certain locations that give you the necessary items you need, including even Pokeballs. So there's no need now for an NPC shop to sell it to you. You'll also find yourself some self-healing stations that do not have Nurse Joy. It felt a little unusual not seeing her there, but you can find a Paldea if you miss her that badly. Going back to what kind of battles were there, well, I wanted to mention that the DLC battles, again, focus on doubles. NPC trainers in the overworld will be doubles battles. Main story missions will be doubles battles. I'll also be going over why it's so challenging in the second part of the preview. Another question is what Pokemon were in my party? What did they give me? Well, they gave me a Talonflame, a Meow Scarda, Duraludon's Evolution, which is Archie Dula du Duraludon. I find that one so hard to say. Sorry. Magmortar, Rhyperior, and Lucario. And they were over leveled to be in their 80s to make this demo a little bit easier so it can go through it. Now, another big question was how was the diversity of Pokemon in each of the biomes that I visited? Well, each biome had a pretty good diversity of Pokemon. And another one to follow up with that question is did Pokemon repeat in different areas? Well, yeah, I did see some Pokemon double up in certain areas. Examples of this was Rhyhorn and Scyther. They were both in the Savannah biome and they were also in the Canyon biome. Golurk was also in the Polar biome and also showed up in the Canyon biome. And there were deerlings in every single biome and of course because there's different forms you would see their different seasonal forms as you go through all the different biomes now i did want to talk about if pokemon fixed the camera feature to remove the user interface so you can get that nice b-roll or take screenshots or recordings the answer is nope uh, they have not done anything different to that. It's still stuck there where you're looking at the user interface. Did you come across any new Pokemon not revealed by the Pokemon company? Believe it or not, I actually did not encounter anything new while running around. I only encountered returning Pokemon or Pokemon that were previously found in Scarlet and Violet. Are there any secret locations on the map or things like that? Well, I can't say anything about that. So you're going to have to find out for yourself what's on the map, what's not on the map. Now, after after a quick snack break and getting some footage of the event, I went back to play the next part of the preview. The biome that this took place in was the canyon one. I went over to the counter there and talked with a guy who needed specifically 50 BP, which is completely separate from the LP in the base game. How you get these BP is going to be very interesting, but I'm not allowed to comment any more on that. However, all I'm going to say, it's definitely a fun feature to earn them and you should check that out for yourself when you get to play the game after that i went to a location with amaris who mentioned something about gaining the power to fly with my legendary pokemon but for this trial it would be temporary maybe we might unlock full flight at the end of the dlc I don't know, but it's a quite the tease to do that. Let's go into the challenge. This is probably the easiest trial ever because all you have to do is fly through circles until you reach the final one. The timer counts down from 30 seconds and two to three seconds gets added on as you pass through one. Also, I wanted to point out that there is not inverse flying. Just your left joystick to move in the direction you want and the right joystick is going to help you look around. Pretty simple. Something also cool to note about the rings you travel in is that you can see Magnemites 
help provide power for it. So this looks super easy, right? Well, after that, you have to battle Amaris. And I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm not even allowed to mention what team she has. However, this is what I will say. It's a doubles battle, which is the main focus in the game. Do not expect all the Pokemon to be the same type with the same weaknesses. Be prepared for things like Trick Room, Stealth Rocks, Protect, and the shenanigans that you'd usually find when you play a doubles battle online. I also need to mention that she has a full team of six Pokemon and that I lost four Pokemon during this battle. But you can just imagine if this fight was hard, how insane the fights are going to be in this DLC, especially if they were like this fight, which everyone there informed me that's what their goal was to make it a lot more difficult and harder. Now, after this moment, they didn't let me play anymore, but I had to ask some final questions. Did you see the 19th Terra type? What is it? I actually was not shown this at all and had no idea how to activate it. So the only conclusion is it must be via the main storyline. Did I see any Paradox Pokemon? When I was playing, I did not see any Paradox Pokemon. Pokemon while exploring at all um, on the surface and I wasn't allowed to go back to area zero and check it out. However, the reps there basically mentioned that after we complete the DLC that we'll be able to head back to Paldea for the grand finale to conclude this story of area zero. Even the trailer mentioned this. In fact, when they showed off the new Paradox Pokemon, they were shown off in area zero pretty interesting right now don't forget the dlc will be out on december 14th so make sure to complete the base game and the teal mass dlc in order to get into the indigo disc hope this was all helpful and i'll be seeing you all again at the blueberry academy